Good morning and welcome to this virtual service from St Philip's. And a special welcome to those joining us from London, Belfast, Sydney, South Africa, Ontario, Liverpool and Radstock. Maybe one day we'll get to meet together. We're going to worship together in a moment, but before we do, there are loads of things that we'd love to update you on. Following requests after last week's service, there's now a resource on the Church at Home page of our website based on the talk I gave on Psalm 91 last week. Check it out if you'd like to press into that material a little more this week or use it in your next Zoom house group meeting. A few weeks ago, you'll remember that we invited you to contribute to a donation that St Philip's was making to support the vital work of the Genesis Trust here in Bar. Genesis is a brilliant charity that looks after some of the most vulnerable people here in our city. And your response was absolutely incredible. In addition to the £1,000 gift from the St Philip's Mission Fund, your donations have enabled us to donate a total of £2,875. Thank you so much. In addition to the Genesis donation, we emailed you this week letting you know about a national fundraising event called the 2.6 Challenge, which Genesis is joining. The 2.6 Challenge is based on the fact that today, the 26th, would have been the London Marathon, which for Genesis, like many other charities, would have been a really important source of fundraising. So instead of a marathon, the 2.6 Challenge is an opportunity to raise funds by undertaking any form of physical activity at any level. It could be a 2.6 mile run around your garden or climbing your stairs 260 times, anything goes. If you'd like to get involved with that, check out the Genesis website or the coronavirus update section of our own website for more information. Yes, and do keep checking the coronavirus page on our website each week. It's a great place to get a sense of some of the things that we are doing in the community to support those in need at the moment. For example, this week we've continued to connect with more people in the community. One quick example, from just one phone call, we were able to link a family to one of our St. Philip's volunteer grocery shoppers, plug them into our telephone support network and add them to the St. Philip's prayer chain. And last Sunday, a team of awesome people led by Andy Stammers managed to deliver 40 freshly cooked hot meals to older people in the community who would normally join us on Sundays for our one-to-one -one lunches. Thank you so much to all of you who were involved in that. It's not easy keeping you updated on everything that's going on. Much of it is unseen and under the radar, but we just want to say thank you to all of you, to the staff, to all of you in the congregation who are giving your time to support the St Philip's response. Sadly, the lockdown interrupted our very popular 24-7 prayer room, but as I have already said, we need to keep praying more than ever. So even though we're a little late to the party, I'd love to encourage us all as a congregation to join a united Bathwide 24-7 prayer initiative between Easter and Pentecost. It's exactly the same system as our own prayer room. Sign up for slots and join many, many other Christians from all denominations in Bath to pray for our city, our nation and the world. The details are in the description below this video, on the coronavirus update page of our website and in the weekly news email. There's just one more thing we'd like to tell you about. This week we are kicking off an initiative called Matt 22. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus commands us to love our neighbour. We've had a burden since this whole coronavirus thing kicked off to bless the most vulnerable in Odd Down. No strings attached, just for love. The Matt 22 initiative is very simple. We'd love you to help us bless 22 people or households in the community this week. People who are not in the St Philip's congregation, people who are perhaps struggling, struggling a little more than others at this time. 22 doesn't sound like a lot, but Zechariah 4.10 says, don't despise the day of small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. We believe that if this is of the Lord, then it will grow and many could be blessed over the coming months. And if not, well, 22 households have been blessed this week. We'd like you to give a food parcel on behalf of the church. You know your neighbour, God has put you in their street for a reason and you are best placed to bless them in Jesus' name. So here's the plan. Number one, we'd love you to pray and to ask the Lord if there's someone from your street who would be blessed by this initiative. Then let us know who it is, name, rough age, who else is in the household. This week we'll go for the first 22 names that we get, any more and we'll roll them into next week. Number two, we'll supply the bag branded with the MAT22 logo, a card explaining why we're doing this and a list of suggested ideas for items to fill your bag. We're going to put some financial support from our mission fund behind this initiative, so if it would help you to get involved, we can provide a Sainsbury's e-voucher to help you with the shopping costs. 
Let us know if you can get the contents yourself or whether for many excellent reasons, it would be practically better for someone else in the congregation to do that. And on that note, if you don't know anyone personally but would love to help practically with filling a bag, or if you want to donate financially towards filling a bag, just get in touch and we'll link you in where there's a need. Number three, once you or someone else in the congregation has made up the bag, we can arrange for it to be delivered to your neighbor's doorstep, or if you're able to do that yourself, that would be wonderful too. All the details are on our website. Thank you so much for getting involved. We're going to worship together now, and one of the things I'm loving about our services at the moment is that they are giving us an opportunity to learn some new songs. I feel that the goodness of God, his nature and his character are important themes for us at the moment, and so we're going to start our worship now with a new song on that theme. I'd love to encourage you to press in as Jay leads us and turn your affections to God, who is always good, always loving, and always present. Let's worship together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. That I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life, cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so.
Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God I'll sing of your goodness I'm gonna sing of your goodness Sing of your goodness Sing God you're so good Cause God you're so good God You're so good God You're so good You're so good To me God you're so good Yeah. 
Now I make this space a throne Dwelling place for your presence As we remember the truth of who you are Father, we thank you that you are a good God. We love you and we ask that you would continue to minister to us by your Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our vision at St. Philip's is to pursue God until heaven overflows through us. It's about being a people who seek first to minister unto the Lord, to delight in him, to glorify him, and to be familiar with his presence. Because we know that in his presence is fullness of joy, and when he's present amongst his people, heaven begins to manifest. Last week I preached on Psalm 91, a remarkable promise in scripture of protection in the presence of God. And our talk this week is another reflection on intimacy with our Father in heaven. Our speaker today is Alex Eldridge. Alex is a GP and member of our congregation here at St. Philip's. I got a call from Alex on Monday in which she shared with me a picture that the Lord had given her during the week. And as soon as I heard it, I knew it was a word for us today. It felt like a part two to last week's sermon. And I'm so grateful that Alex has agreed to share it with us now. Good morning. Welcome. Hope you've all had good weeks. As the Eldridges are missing you all and can't wait to see you again and give you big hugs. This week, whilst having a quiet time with God, he showed me something very clear through a visual image of personal protective equipment, PPE. Many of us will have heard a lot about it, its shortages, when and if it arrives from Turkey, how to don and off it. Something which I'm getting a bit more used to wearing, but it is nonetheless foreign. Its removal is almost as important as wearing it correctly as removing potentially contaminated services is really important. Our Father invites us to take off our PPE. We don't need it with him. In him we are safe. We can rest and be restored. There is nothing to fear from him. And yet, so many of us approach him with layers of personal protective equipment on. I just felt him say to me personally, just take it off, Alex. You can come and be yourself with me. So I thought I'd take you through how I've been taught to remove PPE, the doffing. First, we need to remove our gloves. As medics, these are the dirtiest parts. They are potentially touch patients who have COVID-19. Psalm 24 verses three and four says, who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. We're invited to draw near to God with clean hands and a pure heart. Once we've removed our gloves, we then wash our hands. Psalm 51 talks so beautifully of God washing us in his love until I am pure again. After each point of removal of PPE, we repeat this step. And I think there's a lovely symmetry in this. Next, we remove the apron or the gown. This is a physical barrier over our bodies, but they're often ineffective. They get twisted, they get torn, they get blown in the wind. And it made me think, how many barriers do I put up between myself and God in my heart? My busyness, my false modesty, fear of my own sin. We remove the apron by tearing the plastic behind our neck. This reminded me of the verse in Exodus where Moses is 
bowing down and praying fervently to God for favour on his people on behalf of this stiff-necked people. We need to humble ourselves in coming to God. But that doesn't mean that he's not there lovingly going to scoop us back up again. We then rip it from behind us, pull it away from us and fold it in on itself, folding in the dirt. We can then stand before him spotless. The blood-stained robes or the hospital gowns worn in ICU are replaced with robes of righteousness. It's a, those are pure white through Jesus' exchange. Revelation 6 says, then each of them was given a white robe. Next come the visor or the safety goggles. A visor is a barrier over the whole face, which on one hand makes me feel so much safer, but also readily makes my glasses steam up behind it. The alternative of safety goggles. And last week while I was on shift um, on Wednesday down in Poulton, I was offered some safety goggles that had been donated generously by a local school. Unfortunately, they'd been well used. <laughs> they were really scratched and made it really difficult for me to see through them. This reminded me of the verse in 1 Corinthians 13, where it says, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall fully know, even as I am fully known. As I pondered this thought, I felt God saying to me, you don't need safety goggles to look at the sun. It's not like when there's a solar eclipse and you have to protect your eyes from the sun's rays. We need to remove our scratched and imperfect views of our Father and just gaze at his loveliness. Finally, I removed my mask. A mask is a barrier to breath. It's designed to stop droplets of water passing between doctor and patient and patient and doctor. So often we're resistant to being breathed on. I don't like it when Chris breathes on me in bed. I have to turn over. I want fresh air. Yet the Bible talks of receiving God's Holy Spirit as receiving his breath. It's right back there at the beginning in Genesis 2. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. In Ezekiel 37, God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to a valley of dry bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Then he tells him to prophesy to the breath and the breath entered them. In John 20, verse 22, after the resurrection, Jesus met his disciples in the upper room and he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. We need to take off our barriers to being breathed on and allow our Father to breathe new life into us. I realise this might feel strange or uncomfortable or even worrying to some of us. I felt God remind me of my annual CPR update. Many of you will be able to recall basic life support training to just singing Nelly the Elephant or staying alive. <laughs> I'm not singing it now. That's fine if it's an adult. But if you're dealing with a baby, the best way to do it is to have the infant on your left forearm cradling their head in your hand. Then when it comes to doing the rescue breaths, you simply just bring their face up to yours, putting your mouth over their nose and mouth and gently breathe in just a little puff into their lungs so as not to overinflate them. I felt our father saying, this is how I breathe into you, gently and just the right amount. As you remove the mask, at last you are fully exposed. You can see your father smile on you and indeed you can share your smile with him. Again thinking of infants, 
How many of us have coped smiles from our newborns, smiling at them and cooing at them? Do you remember the joy of that first smile? Our father's joy is multiplied when he sees us smiling back at him and full of joy in his presence. So as I close, I just wanted to reiterate our father's invitation to be held in his arms. It's, not, it's quite hard to hug someone in PPE. It's not particularly sensible in today's climate either. But we are safe with him. Let's take off our layers of personal protective equipment and know him as he knows us. I loved that talk. Alex has been speaking to us this morning about taking off the barriers between us and God so that we can come and be ourselves with him. So let's just take a moment now to respond in prayer. Spirit, we pray that you would come and speak to us now. Let's wait for a little moment and allow the Lord to speak to us in the way that we need to hear him this morning for the Holy Spirit to drop those moments of revelation deep into our hearts. So let's just wait for a little moment. I just have a sense this morning that there's an invitation for us as a community to really engage with that idea of dropping the barriers and allowing un hindered access to our Father who loves us, our Father who doesn't want us to be impeded by barriers, but that he wants us to know that we have free access to him, that he invites us into the most intimate and deep relationship we could possibly imagine. I wonder if for some of us we need to let go of some barriers that we've been holding on to for a while. Unforgiveness, pride, disobedience, things that have been said to us in the past that whether we realize it or not, we've been agreeing with lies that have been spoken over us. And I believe that the Lord wants to break that off some of us today. And so often in our lives, barriers are put in place by other people things that have been done to us. Maybe forgiveness is a major doorway for you this morning to know a deeper relationship, a deeper encounter with the Father. He wants you to know that you're not defined by what people say about you or what they've done to you. You're not defined by shame. You're defined by innocence, by your sonship, your daughtership, by the great love of the Father for you. So, Holy Spirit, would you come and speak into those areas of our lives? I just also feel like there's an invitation this morning for us to agree with uh, his invitation to awaken hunger afresh in us this morning, to desire more of him, to have encounters with him that we've never had before, to be blown away afresh by his love, his presence, his good and perfect plan, for you, for me, and I really feel like we don't have to force that stuff. The Lord invites us to trust him to awaken that hunger. So I just want to pray for that. Father, would you awaken a hunger in us? Everything from you is a gift. You give grace to every invitation that you give to us, that we might obtain that invitation, not through our own works, our own goodness, but by your grace and mercy. And I pray, Lord, awaken us, awaken our hunger. Lord, would you use this time where we're all apart, though many of us may be busy, new moments in our weeks, in our days that we're finding that we have a little bit more time to ourselves, Lord, I pray, would you come in those moments? Would you give us protected time, rich time, in which we can encounter you and know you more deeply? And I love that word from Alex's talk about the breath of God and how gently he breathes into us. We have nothing to fear from the Spirit of God. He is perfectly good 
and he loves us. So Holy Spirit, please, would you breathe afresh in us, breathe life into us, breathe life into the dry bones, breathe life into our church, into our relationships, into our relationship with you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you that you are in such a good mood, that you are a good father, that you are perfect in every way. Yeah. Let's just stay in an attitude of prayer. I'd just love to let you know that today we're launching our prayer ministry Zoom room. So if you are joining us live straight after the service, the Zoom room will be open for 30 minutes. The details are in the description of this video, also on our website, and they were in the email that you would have received this week if you're a member of St. Philip's congregation. Prayer ministry team are waiting for you in breakout rooms. If you come and join the meeting, um, I'd love to allocate you to a breakout room so you can receive personal one-to-one -one prayer. And now we're going to continue in prayer as Bill and Caroline lead us. The Lord says, call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you. At this time of trouble, we pay for the vulnerable in our society. We pray for all those in intensive care and we ask for your healing for them and your protection for all the hospital staff who are taking personal risks to help others. We pray for strength and endurance for them and that they will get all the PPE that they need. We pray for care workers and all those who are working to keep society functioning. We ask for your protection for them as they work to serve us. We remember the many who can no longer work and are worried about their financial situation and how they can feed their families. We pray for your peace for them and ask you to provide for their needs. We thank you for the work of Genesis and for the generous contribution that members of this church have made towards it. We pray for the countries that have yet to feel the full effects of the virus, where social distancing will be almost impossible and where there is little or no state support. We lift all these people to you and ask that you will support and guide them through this pandemic. We pray for our children and young people who are having to adapt to a very strange environment. We thank you for the contribution of schools and teachers and pray for all families struggling with having to homeschool while trying to do their own work at home. We think of those children living in high-rise flats with no outside space for families where relationships are strained and children vulnerable. We thank you for the various media which are enabling young people to keep in touch with each other and for the amazing initiatives being created. Here at St Philip's we thank you that Raj is now out of hospital and we pray for his continued recovery from the virus and for your support for his family. We pray that as a church we continue to play a part in supporting our community in Oddown. We think particularly of people who are alone and feeling very isolated. May they know your love and feel your presence surrounding them. We pray for the economy, both globally and for our own nation. In these uncertain times, nobody knows what the effect of the shutdown will be in the future. Lord, we know that you're in control and pray for your wisdom and guidance for political leaders as they try to find a way through this and pray that attitudes will change and we will see a fairer distribution of wealth. We thank you, Lord, for the beauty of our world. We pray that as countries gradually emerge from lockdown, they will recognise the need to preserve the environment, acknowledge their role in stewardship of the land and re-examine their priorities putting social concern and love for one another above greed and power. We have seen some of the best human qualities working together locally and nationally for the good of one another. We pray that love for our neighbour may be the inspiration that takes us forward. Finally, Lord, we look to you for revival, for your gospel to not only be heard, but lived out among us. The psalmist wrote, those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Amen. 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 Let's close our service in worship. Come breathe your love.
life in us Come breathe your life today Come breathe your life today Cause you give life You are love darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord you give life you give life you are love
Well, thank you so much for joining us again this morning. We've loved worshipping with you. Let me close our service with a prayer. Father, thank you for all of those who have tuned in this morning. And especially, Lord, I want to thank you so much for our family here at St. Philip's. We love them. We miss them. We can't wait to meet together again. But in the meantime, Lord, this week, would you fill us with your spirit? Comfort us, give us peace, give us joy. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.